conveying where our bookmobile stops are uh, directly to our patrons and to the rest of staff. Um, we've always had schedules of bookmobile stops that list the stops, but not everybody knows uh, where the specific stop is. So we need to make it easy for patrons to find out where a stop is, but also fellow staff members. Before I was the web administrator, I was a reference intern at the desk, and as an intern, they staffed me at times when nobody else wanted to work, which was weekends, when there wasn't somebody to refer to. And one of the questions I dreaded the most was, uh, can you tell me where the bookmobile is today? I could look at the schedule and I could say, sure, the bookmobile's at, uh, at Stanford from 2.30 until 3.30 p.m. And they, say, they, they would say, great, we're in Stanford. And I was totally lost. I didn't really know where Stanford was on the map, let alone where the community center in Stanford was. So we ended up having um, basically paper maps that we did. Uh, we had all sorts of varieties. I wish I had copies of them, but unfortunately we, we threw them all out because they probably replaced it. We had hand-drawn maps. We had maps that were part of some promotional brochure for a store that we co-opted. We put these into binders. They were available at the reference desk. If you were lucky, the map was there and the map was current. Um, we had a lot of maps for stops that hadn't existed for five years. And we had no maps for stops that had been created in the last couple of years. So it was real hit or miss. And when we started on the web, we took that basic system and, uh, and redid it electronically. This is the way we used to do it. Uh, I, I don't remember what application we used, something like Microsoft Paint or Microsoft Draw. And we drew little lines and created little text boxes and created a little bookmobile icon, which we could apparently only put at 90 degree <laughs> angles. Um, but this worked fairly well for some stops if we had somebody actually to do the work. This one, if you knew this general part of Bloomington, Indiana, that probably would work for you. If you didn't know uh, where Clear Creek Elementary School was or Old 37 and Walnut, well, it, it'd be hard to find that spot. Here's maybe a better example. This is actually on our website, or was on our website, of how it worked. It's a, it's a great map of Kirksville, uh, uh, Indiana, and it tells you that the bookmobile stops at Harmony Road and Rockport Road by the fire department, which is great if you know where the intersection of Harmony Road and, uh, and Rockport Road is. But if you don't know where that is, there's no other bearing, no reference, no way to find out where the highway is or how to get there from, from some other town. So it, it's really not that useful. And what we often ended up with, oh, here's another one actually, I, I forgot about this slide. This is uh, one that's a little bit more complicated. These, despite the fact that they're fairly crude, they're not all that easy to make. Uh, uh, I have no graphic design ability whatsoever. So if we were to create a new stop to come up with this map, we actually, I think, used our graphic designer, and he obviously didn't spend a lot of time on it. But, <laughs> but not, not, not that simple for someone like me to make. Um, or to change if we move the stop from the health pavilion to the cyclotron, moving that icon would be a little bit involved for me anyway. Um, but too often, this is what we ended up uh, with. Let me try my cool laser here. Check back soon for a map of this stop. And at some point, we realized that about 50% of our individual stop pages looked a lot like this with no map at all. We just hadn't kept current with it. Nobody in the department was doing it, and getting our IS department to do it at that time um, was, was fairly difficult. So um, at some point along the way, a couple of years ago, there were uh, online maps that started to become available. This is one I just surfed and, and found a, a